Okay, here's where we were last time. We have the lights out game uh, with the constructor. We have a two-dimensional grid of booleans, and we could print them off. Well, the game's not very exciting or functional right now. We need some of the lights to be on. So, first thing I want to do here is create a method that will randomize my game. And to randomize my game, I am going to use my nice for loop structure that I'd seen before. Perfect. What do I want to do? Let's talk to each individual cell. This nested for loop lets me talk to grid ij. And what I want to be doing to grid ij is setting it equal to true or false. So somewhere I want to set it to be equal to true. But I only want to do that conditionally. If math.random is greater than 0 0.5, then I'm going to set it equal to true. OK, so back in my main method, let's do some things before we print it off. Let's randomize it. Hey game, randomize. Now, print. Let's see what we get. Perfect. I am seeing a lot of trues and falses in there. This is a nice random game that I could be playing. Good. Now we want a way for the user to interact. We're going to let them toggle pieces. So public Void toggle, somebody's given us an x and a y coordinate, and if they tell us where they want us to toggle, it'd be super easy for us to say grid x y equals, well it's a boolean, so I can just say not grid x y. That's convenient. Back in main, let's start to use this game. Toggle one comma one, and then print it again. We should be able to see something change. So this square right here is off. I toggled it one one. It becomes on. Everything else is the same. Good. I can toggle individual spots in the game. Let's let the user do this. That's the next thing I want to do. So I can randomize it, print it off for them, and then I'm going to let the user pick stuff. Well, I need to talk to the user first. The way we do that is with a scanner. System dot in. So we wrap the input in Java inside the scanner to give us an easy way to get in some numbers. And so I would be able to say here int x equals scanner dot next int int y equals scanner dot next int. And it would be nice to tell the user what we're expecting from them. So I could say up here what is your x value? And I could say down here, what is your y value? And then that individual one, instead of typing in one and one, I want to type in x and y. And then that part that the user tells me should be the one that gets toggled. Let's try this out. x. Let's do 0, uh, 2. Notice that this spot is now changed, and I got to pick it as a user. Okay, that was nice. Let's add something where they repeatedly get to do it. So after it randomizes, it prints off the game. And here, I don't really have a nice way to stop this yet, so I'm going to say while true. I don't like making infinite loops, but this lets me repeatedly do what I want to do. 
I use or type in an x and a y value, 0, 0, I can turn that one off, 0, 4, turn that one off, 1, 0, turn this one off. This is a pretty easy game the way I've implemented it. I can just go get things and turn them all off one by one. Well, toggle should be working a little bit differently, right? The toggle, I need to be talking about not just this one, but the orthogonal ones around it. What about the one to the right? What about the one to the left? What about the one that is up from where you are? And the one that is down from where you are? Okay, let's go run things again. And now, when the user wants to toggle stuff, you can see our code up here. If I want to toggle the spot that is at zero, zero, I get an array index out of bounds exception. I am trying to toggle something, but there are other things around it. The corners, the edges, those are not going to be happy. If I run it, but I do pick something that is legal, two, three, then I can see that my code is doing stuff correctly. It is doing the toggle in the right spots. But I want to catch it in other places. I want to catch those corners. Now there's a couple ways to do it. You can do it with if statements, and you could do it with try catches. Let's talk about that in the next video for the try catches and the if statements because we want to do checks to make sure that we're not going over the edge and we want to make sure that this one's valid as well. So we'll see the right places to do that and talk about the exception handling that Java is going to be giving us.